welcome to a work day in my life or day in the life of a NICU nurse. I still got my morning voice. I can barely even talk right now. It was so hard to get up. It was raining. But yeah, I just showed you guys a little like montage of my basic morning routine that I do before work. And now I'm just going to drink my coffee and eat my breakfast. I, for a while, didn't even eat breakfast before, but lately I've been doing some meal prepping and making some overnight oats. So I've been trying to eat those before work and I love doing that because it honestly makes me feel so much better. I'm gonna eat this, I usually just get on my phone a little bit and just try to wake up. And then after I eat my breakfast, I usually make my lunch. So I'm gonna go do that really quick and then I'll show you guys what I made. Okay, so what I'm packing in my lunch, and this is what I usually take like every day, honestly, is a sandwich with my favorite healthy CD bread and some turkey, cheese, spinach with some ranch and spicy mustard on there and then i got some fruit it just depends um, on the day on what fruit that i take also i'm so sorry for my finger i cut it while chopping a jalapeno the other day and it's just gross but i had to take the band-aid off also not convenient for work today but we're gonna figure it out <laughs> Then my cashews, I'm obsessed. I always have to take some cashews or almonds or some type of nut. They fill me up and make me feel good. Then I got this little Belveda sandwich. I usually just eat the regular crackers, but they were out, so I got these. It's just a good staple to have in your lunch. And then, of course, I have my water bottle. I usually take an iced coffee as well in this little cup with the straw, but I'm just not really feeling it today and I'm kind of running out of time, so I don't know. I just, I'm not gonna do the iced coffee. Okay, now this is the part where I usually start rushing. I need to leave in 15 minutes. I still need to put a little bit of makeup on. I usually just put some on like under my eyes to cover my dark circles. We'll see how long I keep that up, but that's what I've been doing as of now. And then I gotta get dressed, so I'll see you guys after that. All right, I'm dressed and ready to go for the most part, except my shoes, <laughs> and this is one of my college sweatshirts. I'm really not supposed to wear this, but I left my scrub jacket and my boyfriend's, and it's freezing in there. It's cold outside, and honestly, like, I can get away with it. People wear other sweatshirts, but I do have some Nikki sweatshirts on the way, so if you're wondering. <laughs> but anyway, okay, time to go. All right, I'm on the way currently. Thank God I live like five minutes away from the hospital, which is so nice. But I'm on the way, it's cold. It's dark, rainy, and chilly out, but we're on the way. And today is actually a very big day for me because today is my first day on my own, out of orientation without a preceptor, so I'm honestly quite nervous. Especially because my last day was so chaotic. We got an admit, an ICU admit, and it was just crazy, but I'm just telling myself, I know they're not gonna make me his first ICU admit on my first day alone, so it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna say a little prayer before. Honestly, gonna be saying some little prayers the whole day. <laughs> but yeah, I honestly have been meaning to make a day in my life video for a while and it just happened to work out that I finally got around to it on my first day on my own so how sweet documenting it I'm sorry it's so dark and blurry but <laughs> y'all can hear me fine and obviously you guys know I can't really film much when I'm in there because of HIPAA and just many reasons obviously so tonight when I'm done I'll just kind of mainly give you a rundown of what my day looked like what a typical day looks like and just let you know how it went. So, wish me luck and I will talk to you guys later. survived all I know is that I just need to chug some water because 
barely got to drink any water all day just because I was running around. Didn't get to sit down to like the very end of the shift to like crank out all my charting. <sighs> so, let me give you a little rundown. <laughs> Put you guys in my cabinet because the lighting's better over here. So I'll give you guys a little summary on how the day went. It's like eight o'clock and I'm ready to get in the shower. One of my babies was on contact precaution. I just am feeling a little bit gross. Like that's the first thing I have to do when I get home is shower before I eat or anything. I'm just cracking up because I was like, oh, I mean, it's fine. It's not like they're gonna make me first I see you admit. Well, I walk in and look at my assignment and um, I'm second ICU admit, which I knew most likely I will be getting a baby because I don't know, we're just always getting a bunch of ICU admits. So I just knew it was probably gonna happen. And to explain that a little more for those of you who are like, what are you talking about? So our NICU unit has ICU babies, intensive care unit babies. We have an open unit and there's just like a bunch of beds of babies everywhere in one open unit and like one section is ICU babies so there's like the really sick babies and then we have intermediate care babies over here and those babies aren't as sick and they just don't have as many things going on and are not as like complicated to take care of so usually you do have more babies when you're over there though and then we have the annex which is like even healthier babies they're like about to be able to go home we call them like feeder growers they're just like working on feeding and growing so anyway so each shift you get your assignment that says what babies you have and then there's always going to be someone who's first I see you admit second I see you admit third I see you admit etc and then like first IMC or intermediate care admit or transition baby admit second IMC admit you get the gist so I had two I see you babies and was second I see you admit and then also everyone is assigned a call time which means that's the time that you have to be the nurse to go down on a delivery when labor and delivery calls up to the NICU and says they need our team to go down also I look in my call time is eight to nine and of course like right when the clock strikes eight right when I'm in my baby's bed doing my eight o'clock assessments the red phone rings with its piercing, shrilling ring. And so I had to go down on that delivery. But for us, I think it's like for the first three months that you're on your own, you still have to have another nurse go down with you on deliveries, which I was not mad about because I don't really fully feel competent in that yet, especially just because things can go really wrong and it's just scary. I do feel like I need a little more practice with just like, worst case scenario when it comes to that situation. So anyway, we go down and then of course, that baby ends up being an ICU admit. So we bring it up and it was the first ICU admission, which went to the girl who was my preceptor. So then I was next up and I knew it. I was like, all right. It was literally not even 9 a.m. yet and we already had our first ICU admit. So I was next. I had the whole shift to be next. So I knew it was coming. And then around 12 o'clock, I'm like, pretty caught up on my stuff and I did my 8 o'clock assessments and feedings, my 11 o'clock assessment and feedings. Well, one of my babies was actually 8 and 12, but I did those, got to do a little bit of charting and then the phone rings and they went down on a delivery for a term meconium stained baby and those can either be like fine or they could be like really bad. So I'm just like, oh no, please be okay. And then later we get the call, they're coming up and it's second ICU admit. So it was my baby. And honestly, looking back, I'm like, wow, like that wasn't too bad. In the moment, of course, I'm like internally freaking out, but I was just proud of myself for the whole day because just multiple things in the moment in my head, I'm like spazzing out and like have so much going through my head of like things I have to do. But looking back, I'm like something about like when you have no other choice, like you just rise to the occasion. Like I just did what I had to do. I figured it out. Obviously, like I asked for help when I needed help or I asked a question when I had a question, but I did it. I was proud. I started and I had to on that baby by myself full before taping it first stick. So that always feels good. You know, we got to celebrate those little wins there. And then 
luckily that baby like wasn't didn't have too much crazy stuff going on so honestly by the end of the shift the baby was on room air it didn't even have CPAP or if you don't know anything about nursing stuff just like a type of oxygen with like the cannula on its nose um, it didn't have to have that anymore and it was on room air and then I was able to bottle feed it um, for five o'clock feedings so yeah definitely was busy I literally did not after that all happened I did not I did not eat lunch to like three something didn't even eat a full lunch luckily my preceptor helped me get some things done at the last minute with like charting and stuff so that I could leave somewhat on time so obviously time management and stuff like that is gonna get easier as it goes and I'm gonna get faster but definitely a little stressful at times but could have been a lot worse I survived the babies are alive so that's all that matters also it's just like I just swear things always happen at once it's like you get it and admit the second you get to admit the sweet parents of your other baby come walking up so then you have to address them and take care of them and like I almost feel horrible saying that because I mean that's such a great thing for the parents to come see the babies like that's their baby I want them there but when you have so much going on and then it's like always when you finally get a second and then the parents come up and then they're like asking you all these questions and you have to take the baby out at the incubator and just a lot but I'm here I'm alive. Now I need to hydrate, I need to shower, I need to eat something. I know that was probably very confusing for those of you who are watching this not knowing anything about like NICU or nursing at all. So I don't know, maybe I'll try to like insert like pictures of definitions of things or something. And if you have any questions, please comment down below or if you would want like a video or something explaining this stuff more in detail, I'd love to do that. It's just a lot to cover, so. All right, I'm gonna go shower. Alright, just got out of the shower feeling so fresh and clean. For dinner I'm just having this chicken tortilla soup that I made the other day when I was meal prepping it doesn't look that appealing but it's so good I think I'm gonna put some of these green onions on there even though this was supposed to be for my other recipe um, my fish recipe that I made I think I'm still gonna put some on because why not Now I'm just going to eat my soup while I watch some YouTube and then The Voice and just relax. I don't need to go to bed because I have work again tomorrow. So I think I'm going to go ahead and close this video here. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it interesting. If you have any questions, comment below. Or if there's anything else you'd like to see more of, please comment below. And I love you guys. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.